local, no. This is WSFA 12 News. Tomorrow is a first alert weather day. Our eyes are on the skies tonight. We're expecting wet weather later tonight that may turn into severe storms by tomorrow. That's why tomorrow is a first alert weather day. In fact, Chief Meteorologist Josh Johnson says the threat appears to be growing. He's joining us off the top tonight with the forecast. Josh. Hey there, Mark. Yeah, we're very concerned about the possibility of damaging wind and the most intense storm cores tomorrow. The news on your hometown station, WDBJ7, starts right now. Why would someone just leave me there for dead, really? You know, unless they stopped and they saw me moving. A hit and run leaves a man unconscious and recovering from several injuries. Now he's sharing his story in the hopes of finding answers. The Biden administration has announced its latest attempt to cancel billions of dollars in student loans. We have details on the plan. And major storm damage closed down a historic bridge in Pennsylvania County, the latest on efforts to restore it. Well, good morning to you. It is five o'clock on this Tuesday morning. We're so glad you're here with us. I'm Kimberly McBroom and I'm Nisi Payne. All right. Uh, a lot of you might have stayed up late watching the NCAA men's final last night. Uh a Coeur d'Alene teen facing a federal judge today accused of plotting a terror attack in the name of ISIS. He made sure that no person, no law was taken to court. And money, power, sex. Opening statements begin today in the murder trial of Chad Daybell. We've got arguments from both sides tonight. We've got a few more clouds in the forecast starting tomorrow, but it comes with a bump in temperatures. Cream 2 News at 4 begins now with Whitney Ward and Jeremy Legue. Well, happening here in just a few minutes, the man who is accused of murdering four University of Idaho students is back in court. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. Thank you for joining us here tonight for the MTN 530 News. Let's start with your headlines. Fire breaks out at a Kalispell Hotel. We'll have details on what happened coming up. New developments in the deadly hit and run case of an early woman named Micah Westwolf. An Idaho man in court on charges he planned a terrorism attack on Coeur d'Alene churches. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Firefighters from across Kalispell responded to a fire at a local hotel earlier this afternoon. It sent plumes of smoke across the nearby highway. Good morning, I'm Jacqueline Matter. It's 4 a.m. on Wednesday, April 10th. And I'm Stephen Graddick. Thanks so much for starting your morning with us. Let's take a look at what's happening today. A teenage teenager facing charges connected to the murder of a 14 year old at a DC Metro station. Details this morning from inside the teen's first court appearance and what comes next. Plus a Fox 5 exclusive, a group of men caught on camera stealing thousands of dollars from a local temple and police say this isn't the first time. And some new data shedding a light on the district's deadly carjacking problem. How the city's crime compares to the rest of the nation. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday, halfway through the work week. And uh -huh. we were just talking about how much we enjoyed yesterday's weather, albeit a little cloudy. Yeah. The increase in temperatures was so, uh, so well received. I know, and no wind chill at all. That was nice to be able to go outside and just feel the fresh air and come. West 2 News starts now with breaking news. And that breaking news is happening outside an Apopka Circle K gas station. Police have Apopka Boulevard and Sheeler Avenue taped off. West 2's Haley Crumble Home joins us from that scene coming up in just a few moments. First, we want to get you ready for tomorrow because it's an impact day. That's why you see this yellow icon. It means strong to severe storms will be heading to our area. I want to start things off with Chief Meteorologist Tony Minoffi. Time it all out for us. So. All right, guys. Yeah, let's time it out. We think the, uh, the time frame is going to be from like 11 o'clock through about 7, 8 o'clock in Brevard. Now at 11. It would not have been three days after the fact. It would have been part of what has to be done by the day of qualifying. After hours of testimony and evidence, the Bid Board of Elections decides to disqualify two candidates for sheriff. We'll explain the decision and tell you what happens next. Georgia joining an effort to block President Biden's student loan repayment plan. Why Republican-led states filed a lawsuit against the president's SAVE program. This industrial park in Baldwin County is getting a million dollars from the federal government. I'll tell you how the county plans to use it. 
13 WMAZ News at 11 starts right now with Frank Malloy, Lori Johnson, and Chief Meteorologist Ben Jones, and Marvin James with sports. Hello and thanks for joining us as we come on the air tonight. We are tracking heavy rain as it rolls through central Georgia. Chief Meteorologist Ben Jones shares what we need to know as we head through the overnight hours. Yeah, right now it's just rain. Uh Live from WTOC, the Southeast News Leader. The News at 11 starts now. Coming up on the News at 11, Savannah City Council considering a new parking study in some downtown areas. We'll hear from someone who works in the area on the changes they'd like to see. And how much screen time is too much? We'll hear from an optometrist on how too much time on tablets and phones can permanently change your child's vision. Plus, it's day three of the Masters Tournament in Augusta. WTOC's Tim Guidera and sports director Jeff Roberts have all the highlights for you. But first, we're following a breaking news story that a 3rd Infantry Division aircraft made an emergency landing in Evans County today. Thanks so much for joining us for the News at 11. I'm Haley Boland. Don Baker has the night off. We have some breaking news now. We're getting word that O.J. Simpson has died. According to a post on his ex account, Simpson died after a battle with cancer. He was diagnosed back in February with prostate cancer and he was undergoing chemotherapy. Simpson was the Heisman Trophy at USC, became an NFL Hall of Famer with the Buffalo Bills and San Francisco 49ers. His family posting this statement on X. It says, on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. State 31 in Southern California. We're following the breaking news that O.J. Simpson has died of cancer at the age of 76. Joining us now on the phone. Breaking news, O.J. Simpson, a pro football Hall of Famer who would later be tried and ultimately acquitted of double murder in one of the most publicized trials in American history, has died at 76 years old after a battle with cancer. This morning, people are remembering O.J. Simpson. The football player passed away after a battle with cancer. We're looking back at his life. Plus, a former Aurora police officer accused of pistol whipping and choking a man in 2021 is on trial. What unfolded in yesterday's closing arguments with jury deliberations underway. And Denver police giving an update on their recruiting class, how they are trying to attract more officers. Thanks for joining us on Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Amy Wattis. The family of O.J. Simpson has announced the athlete has died after a battle with cancer. In a this is KCAL News, Los Angeles. Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187. A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Now at six, the life and controversial legacy of O.J. Simpson, the fallen football hero, acquitted in the trial of the century, is dead at the age of 76. Good evening. You're watching KCAL News at 6 on CBS Los Angeles. I'm Pat Harvey. Simpson's family announcing the death today on social media, saying he lost his battle with prostate cancer. His career as a football star captivated fans, while the murder trial of his ex-wife and her friend polarized the nation. Right now at 6. A Buffalo Bills legend. OJ running left. OJ and a controversial figure. Just like maybe driving a white or light colored Ford Bronco. Dead at 76, we have reaction following the death of OJ Simpson. Pay up or find somewhere else to park. The new changes that could cost you at One Hurdle Avenue Business. Plus inclusion on the ice. The hockey tournament making it possible for everyone to play and from the Northtown Center to the KeyBank Center. I'm Lindsay Moppert here at the KeyBank Center ahead of tonight's fan appreciation game against the Washington Capitals. Stick around for more on what the players had to say about this matchup coming up in sports at 6:20. Local news, local weather, and local sports on your side. 
Channel 2 News at 6 starts now. And right at the top, we begin tonight at 6 with the death of O.J. Simpson, the former Buffalo Bills star who was acquitted of murdering his ex-wife in a televised trial that captured the attention of the entire nation, has died at the age of 76 from prostate cancer. I'll never let you guys down, man. I'll, I'll live up to the honor of being in this hall and being on your team. A look back at the life of O.J. Simpson, from his Hall of Fame football career in Buffalo to his fall from grace following his acquittal in a brutal double murder. When that news hit, what was what was the response to all that? Well, shock uh, and uh, disbelief. Tonight, reaction to the death of a fallen former Bill. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be painful. There are calls to remove Buffalo's Catholic bishop. This is Eileen Buckley. I sat down with Bishop Fisher for his response. I'm Leah Lando at the United Way talking with moms about the importance of support during and after pregnancy. I'll have more from them coming up. Streaming from downtown Buffalo, this is 7 News at 7. Now at 11, reaction to the death of O.J. Simpson, a look back at the trial of the century, his fame and infamy, and his connection to South Florida. Then, a teen riding a scooter gets shot twice in the back in broad daylight. Tonight, the search is on for four people. Well, our front is through just some morning clouds, and then we're going to clear things up and begin to dry out. Less humidity is going to look good for the weekend. We'll talk about it next. Plus, Uber announces new safety features specifically for women. How you can now make sure you're getting in the right ride. And it sounds like something out of a movie. A help sign leads rescuers to three men on a deserted island. How they survive for more than a week. This is CBS News Miami. And now at 11, O.J. Simpson, the legendary yet controversial football star, has died of cancer at the age of 76. Good evening. I'm Jim Barry, and for Elliot Rodriguez. And I'm Lauren Pastrana. His murder trial divided the entire nation. The high-profile case was marked by two memorable moments. First, the notorious police chase through Los Angeles, where Simpson was inside a white Ford Bronco with a gun to his head. Then the infamous fitting of the glove, which gave him to the iconic line, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Let's begin our team coverage with CBS News Miami's Danya Bacchus taking a look back at Simpson's life. Fox 8 News is New Orleans most watched news. Fox 8 Local First starts now. Well, this is what it looked and sounded like inside an oil change business in Slidell as an EF1 tornado ripped through yesterday morning. The winds howled and the metal doors that you see there flapped like window curtains. Workers quickly opened the others to protect them from the damage as they took cover. And we do have team coverage of the aftermath live from Slidell as residents assess the damage and begin the slow process of recovery there. Live, local, late breaking. This is WDSU News at 4. Recovery efforts begin in Slidell after an EF1 tornado tore through yesterday, leaving behind a path of destruction. This is a look at the damage from our drone. It's a devastating sight that many in Louisiana know all too well. And so many people are still in the dark from yesterday's severe weather. Take a look at this. It's the Clico map that serves most of St. Tammany Parish. Right now, more than 18,000 people still in the dark. Tonight, many in Slidell are continuing to clean up after a powerful tornado tore across the North Shore. That's why I was just grateful that we lived. I didn't think we were going to make it out. Neighbors say they're resilient, but there are ways you can help. Students stranded at school with parents unable to reach them. Literally almost every street that I turn on was um, high water. Now many are questioning area district's decision not to cancel ahead of yesterday's floods. After Wednesday's messy weather, we look forward to more beautiful, delightful weather heading into the weekend. An emotional day in court as the man who killed his three children in a house fire was attacked right before receiving his sentence. This is WWL Louisiana News at 10. Breaking tonight, one person is dead after a fire in Metairie. It broke out around 730 this evening at a home in the 800 block of Airline Park Boulevard.